I'm Cheryl Waters. You've got a tune to the Midday Show on KEXP, where the music matters. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming live around the world at KEXP.org. I'm down here in the performance space with Duran Jones and the Indications. Welcome. So wonderful to have you here. It's awesome to be here. Thanks so much, Cheryl. We absolutely love your record. You're playing a sold-out show at Barbosa tonight, is that correct? That's right. Well, Super thank- excited. Thanks for making time to stop by today. What have you got to start us off with? This one is titled, Can't Keep My Cool.
Holy cow. <laughs> that is Duran Jones and the Indications live on KEXP. That was amazing. Thank you so much. That sounds incredible. What do you got next? <laughs> this next tune is about making a change in your life and making a change in this world. It's titled Make a Change. Duran Jones and the Indications live on KEXP, that fabulous song called Make a Change on their self-titled record. It is so wonderful to hear you performing these songs live today. Again, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. It's such a blessing to be here. It is no wonder your show was sold out tonight at Barboza. I had read that when you recorded this album, um, you or when you released it initially, you'd only played a couple of songs live. I know you jammed a lot as a band, but... That's incredible. What has it felt like playing these live shows and getting a reaction from an audience? Oh, man. Uh, it's something that I honestly really never dreamed of. Uh, it's really cool hearing the crowd react to the music whenever we initially recorded this album. Um, me and the guys, we all agreed to do a one-night-only show. And the crowd was so wild and and live that night that I think we all agreed that we had to keep pushing this forward. 
It sounds like this just started as a fun thing among friends. I, I read about your Sunday night uh, sort of jam sessions. I know uh, some of you went to school. You moved from the South uh, up to Indiana to get a postgraduate degree in music. Can you tell us how this group came together? Yeah, so I finished uh, my bachelor's in Louisiana and uh, went up to Indiana University to do more school. I got a job coaching horns and teaching horns in the IU Soul Review. Uh, I went up there to play saxophone and they were showing guy singers in the class that year. And uh, the director asked me to sing because he knew that I sang in some bands in Louisiana. And I reluctantly said, yes, I didn't really want to do it. <laughs> uh, and that's how I met Blake, uh, who was working as the sound engineer. He's the guitarist of the band. And uh, he told me that he and Aaron Fraser, our drummer slash other vocalist, uh, were writing soul tunes together. And they asked me if I wanted to come hang out. And I thought it would be a cool way to make some friends because I didn't really know many folks in Bloomington at the time. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how this all started. Were you playing soul music before that? Because you're obviously playing music. You said you came to play the saxophone, ended up singing. What kind of music were you playing when you came? Um, yeah, so, you know, as a saxophonist down in New Orleans, uh, it's way more, uh, it's, it's way, I guess, better if you have, like, if you're a jack of many trades. So I would, you know, tell dudes who were looking to hire me, I can sing too, you know, and I'd sing like Marvin Gaye or James Brown or something here or there, but mainly I was on the, I was on the ax, you know. Do you still pick it up? I imagine you do. I haven't in a while, but uh, I definitely, it's calling for me again, for sure. <laughs> Is this what you saw yourself doing when you, uh, you know, were young and you chose you know, to study music? So I imagine you thought you'd have a career in music of some sort. Yeah, for sure. I thought definitely that my voice in music would be in the classical realm uh, more than contemporary and soul music. But uh, fate had other plans for me. <laughs> this band sounds so great together. You introduced Blake and Aaron. Can you tell us who else is playing with you today? For sure. We have Kyle Hout on the bass. We have Mr. Kinch the Great on trumpet. We have Jelani Brooks on tenor sax, and last but not least, on keys, Mr. Steve Okonski. You sound so wonderful together, and you name-checked uh, a couple of musicians there. There are so many touch points for the kind of music that you play, and I've heard you in interviews mention Nina Simone and Sam Cooke quite frequently, and what is it about each of those people that inspires you? Um, for Nina Simone, I really just appreciate that she came from a classical music background and uh, and she never she never let her training go by the wayside, even though she's the high priestess of soul. So I really have a connection because I with her because I really love classical music, too. Um, and with Sam Cooke, I grew up singing in the church, you know, and honestly, those church musicians down in Hillaryville, Louisiana, played such a huge role on how I sing today. And I'm sure it was the same way for Sam. So in that way, I can relate to him. And I just, the boy can sing. I just love his voice, too. Well, this boy can sing as well. <laughs> and you clearly seem to be enjoying it. It's just such a pleasure to watch you all perform. Thank you. We're live here in the KEXP studios with Duran Jones and the Indications. I got a couple more songs for us. Yeah, I'm going to hand the mic over to our drummer for this next one.
live in the KEXP studios with Duran Jones and the Indication. Thank you. This next tune is titled Smile. Thank y'all so much for listening. Jones and the Indications live on KEXP. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming in today. It is such a pleasure and have a wonderful tour. Thank you so much. So good to be here in Seattle. Thank you, Cheryl. You've got to tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.